So all the afflictions, the mental afflictions that are holding anybody down, it's not natural. That's because we are holding on to them. If you let it go, you will return to your natural states. And then you will only experience bliss. And then you will be ready to receive divine grace. There was a man, for years, this is a true story, uh, based out of the present day Bihar, which used to be called the Banga state, one time, there was a man, he worshipped Adya Shakti in the form of Ved Mata Gayatri. For years, he worshipped her. He was the Raj Purohit, the royal priest of the, the king at that time. But he didn't get the results. So he said to his brother, you be the royal priest, I'm just going to do my Anushtanas day and night. His brother said, all right. So he, his brother took over the job and he was already married by now, this man. And he started practicing the Gayatri Mantra. From the ages of 30 till 72, he did an Anushtan, one Anushtan every year of 24 lakhs Japa, the Savitur Gayatri. There is 28 types of Gayatri. But he didn't get a vision. And he became increasingly dismayed and frustrated. And one day he was walking and he met a saint in the cremation grounds. And the sage said to him, you look very dis distressed. What's the matter? And he said, well, if you know I'm distressed, you must also know why am I distressed. The sage said, no, that I don't know. He said, no, I'm sure you'd know. And after a bit of uh, talking and conversation, he said to the saint that I've spent my whole life looking for Mother Divine. Does she even exist? Am I such a her bad child that she hasn't shown her form even once? And he said, look behind you. And he saw there were seven funeral pyres. Six had completely burned down. You could only see little mounds of ashes. But one was still you know, burning. And he said, look at, these are the karmas of your past seven lifetimes. The six have burned. Only one more to go. Once you are ready, you will have her vision, I promise you. And then he held on to his feet. He said, I'm not going to let you go. You have to give me her vision. He said, it's not something I can do. He said, I don't care. I'm not letting you go. So he held on to his feet. A few hours went by. And this sannyasi said to him, are you ready to give up the world? He said, what's left anyway? He said, no, are you ready to give up your family? He said, yes. He said, but I still think you're not ready for the vision. He said, I don't care. I need to see her in this very lifetime. He said, all right. Then chant after me. So the sage chanted and he chanted and just three times later, three chants later, a manifestation of Mother Divine right in front. Now, this, this seeker was beyond himself, beside himself, when he saw Mother Divine's form in front of him. He said, Ma, you are so kathor. You are so stone-like. I called you. I'm 72 years old. I started chanting, calling out for you when I was 20 years old, from 30 till 72. That's all I did. You never appeared. 
And now just in three chants, what is this? You, are, you have the heart of a stone, so I, you better be a stone. I don't want you. He got angry because anger was brewing in him. Anger, whether it's out of some divine desire or worldly desire, anger is anger. And then the form said, okay, stone I will be, but it's not my fault. Only now you took the sannyas diksha and the, the karmas got severed. You cut the rope of your karma bandhan and therefore I had to come. You got initiated by such a person. And then immediately the form becomes that of a stone. And now he's uh, devastated. It just dawns on him what he just did. He starts to cry his eyes out. And the man, the sannyasi, leaves the place. And now he's left with a form of stone. And he's saying, Ma, I can't take you anywhere. And I can't leave you here. People will think you are a stone. I can't afford to do that. So he makes a little hut there and starts to live there. And for the next 20 years, he worships Ma. One day when he's 92 years old, he says, it's time for me to go, Ma. But people behind me will never understand that you exist in real, in this idol right now. So please, assume a form that I can move. So it was said that the form immediately became that of a yantra. And he took the yantra and he gave it to his brother that went in the royal temple and eventually ended up with Adi Guru Shankaracharya and one of the pithams. I heard the story from an authentic source. I read it. I believe it because I've seen Ma's form. I've seen how she can easily manifest a form and just merge it in thin air. That is the only reason I believe this story. So, beginning on Lalita Sasranam, I chanted uh, a little shloka earlier, Shri Vidyam. Lalita Sasranam can be done as an independent practice or it is part of something called Shri Vidya. Ma is called Shri. Shri, Arthat, where all the four types of Sukha, Purusharts live. Dharma, Arthaka, Moksha. Shri means somebody you can take ashray, shelter of, refuge. So Shri Vidyam, but immediately next to it is not an attribute of Ma as such. She is situated in the left side of Shiva. Shiva Kameshwarankastha. Because to have complete understanding of yourself, to really succeed on the path of self-realization or sadhana, you have to understand your masculine and feminine aspects. And these are forever changing in every single human being. Sometimes men act like women and sometimes women act like men. Because these are constantly shifting these energies, feminine and masculine energies. Rinkar mantra jolam. So she is out of the Maya beach it's called. Rin is one of, it's called the Maya beach in, in the all the tantric texts. Now going to the actual Sahasranam, there are three aspects of Lalita Sahasranam. First is devotion. Second is meditation. Third is initiation. Now, devotion is absolutely critical. No matter how tough a yogi you are, Devotion alone will make you humble. If you're not devoted to 
a god or a guru or even to a cause for that matter you will constantly be battling with your own ego and anger all the time it'll keep rising to the brim and it'll keep bothering you and you won't know from where these emotions are springing up you won't know from where these emotions are springing up so devotion is of utmost importance shri mata om shri mata shri maharagya shri mat singhasaneshwari chidagni kund sambhuta dev karya samuddata the very first verse of the actual sasanama shri shri mata the ultimate ma mother a mother is an embodiment of compassion a mother is willing to accept anything when your feminine energy is prevalent in your body you are automatically more compassionate you are more willing to accept things accept people accept circumstances shri maharagi she is not the queen she is not maharani she is maharagi she is the empress she is an independent governing entity in her own rights shri mat singhasaneshwari chidagni kund sambhuta dev karya samuddata when you are positive when your sankalp when your resolution is a noble resolution this chitagni this man this chit is a yagya kund it's a fire pit in that fire pit you offer your everything that is not right for you all the negative emotions and from there she emerges she's not going to emerge from outside she's going to walk from here to outside and be in front of you that's the first stage of a vision the first stage is a dream this is the second stage of a vision there was a man he wanted to have a glimpse of lord krishna and he went to vrindavan on a one way ticket and he locked himself in there in the nidhi one in the evening he didn't go out this is a real life story again at around 3:30 am he had a vision of krishna and he was baffled all his life he had thought when i'm going to meet my deity i'm going to ask him this question or i'm going to ask him that question but when he actually had the vision he could ask no question at all he could not speak he became completely quiet so morning happened the pandits came back and they scolded him for breaking their rules and he went out he went to the station on the station he met another man who said my guru has called you in a place called kila raipur in punjab my guru has called you there he said i don't know your guru he said look i have already bought two tickets in the general class he came to me in a dream last night and instructed me to go to the station that i'll see a man like you and that I, it's my job to take him, take you there and he was flabbergasted he said wow okay i came on a one way ticket anyway there must be some divine will working behind this so he takes that way when he goes he sees the saint he was called kali kambli wale sarkar ji everybody used to call him sarkar ji and he prostrated before him and he said to him sarkar ji all my life i kept thinking when krishna will come i'll ask this when krishna will come i'll ask that i'll talk to him i'll have this question i'll have that question but why did it happen that when he came i could ask no question why it just blew me away why i wanted to speak to him and he said the saint he said you could not have spoken to him because if your own soul is manifested outside who's there to talk to who right how could you have spoken to him he said tumhare swayam ke pran hi to bahar khade the 
स्वरूप धारण करके चिदग्नि कुंड संभूता देव कार्य समुद्रता वेन योर रेजोल्यूशन इज नो बो वेन योर डिजायर टू हैव हर इज एक्सक्लूसिव यू विल नॉट बी डिसअपॉइंटेड